NASCAR's most famous what if. What if Dale Earnhardt was still alive? At the tail end of his career, Dale Earnhardt never got the farewell he deserved, but many would agree that it was coming soon. Some speculate it could have been in 2003 or 2005, while Richard Childress hinted in an interview this year that Dale already had a plan in place. In an earlier Racing Infinity, we looked at a timeline where Dale Earnhardt got a farewell tour in 2003. Today, we have an all-new twist on the scenario, one that rebels against the norm just as Dale himself did. What if we had another decade of Dale? This special edition of Racing Infinity will have more story than any before it. Before we get to the big race of this volume, we have a full decade of story to cover, all centered around the Intimidator, Dale Earnhardt. At the age of 49, he was still winning races and contending for championships, and there's no telling for sure how his career would have ended if he got to do it on his own terms. One thing is certain though, Dale wouldn't care what others thought about it. In this scenario, we'll be racing the 2010 Coke Zero 400 at Daytona. At 59 years young, Dale is as charismatic as ever as he prepares for his final professional race. But how did we get here, and what's changed along the way? In 2001, Earnhardt finished the Daytona 500 in third place behind his son and race winner Michael Waltrip. He would then go on to pick up his 77th and 78th career wins in a photo finish win over Jeff Gordon at Atlanta and the inaugural cup race at Chicagoland. Meanwhile, Kevin Harvick would run selected races in the number 30 AOL Chevrolet for Richard Childress while at the same time winning the 2001 Busch Series Championship. As for the Winston Cup Championship, Jeff Gordon would beat Earnhardt in the standings to capture his fourth championship. In 2002, Kevin Harvick would win Rookie of the Year driving the number 30 and would get his first career win at Chicagoland. But not too long after, on lap one of the second Pocono race, Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Steve Park would get in a major wreck. Dale Jr. would get out of his car unscathed, but Park was injured and would miss the rest of the season. Harvick would move over to the number one for the remainder of the season, while Jeff Green would drive the 30. After his incident, Dale Earnhardt became an advocate for more safety innovations. While Park would make a return to racing in 2003, this wreck set in motion the changes we would see later in the decade. Dale Earnhardt would pick up two more wins in 2002, those coming at the Spring Darlington race and the Brickyard 400. Tony Stewart still wins the 2002 championship. Dale Earnhardt would buy out Kevin Harvick's contract for 2003 and beyond, keeping Harvick in the number one. Steve Park would return during the 2003 season to run a majority of races in the number 91 for Ray Evernham. Earnhardt had a more inconsistent season as he hit the age of 52, but he would win the final race of the season at Homestead, while Matt Kenseth took home the championship. In 2004, Dale Earnhardt's decline began to show more, but he was able to gain another win in the Coca-Cola 600. This win, just past Earnhardt's 53rd birthday, set the mark as the new oldest winner in NASCAR Cup Series history. Steve Park would run a full season for Evernham Motorsports, but after this season, he would move down to the Craftsman Truck Series. As Dale Sr.'s age started to show, his team was alive and well as Dale Earnhardt Jr. would hand DEI their first championship that year in the inaugural chase for the cup. Earnhardt picked up his 83rd career win at the Fall Martinsville race in 2005, but he had fallen out of the top 10 in points. In 2006, Earnhardt would go winless. Then, he finally made the call that 2007 would mark his final full-time season in the Nextel Cup Series. In fitting fashion, Dale had one more marquee moment left in him. Earnhardt picked up his 84th career win 
at the Summer Daytona race. His final stop there as a full-time driver and the final Super Speedway race for the Gen 4 car. Earnhardt still had a desire to compete and would continue to run a few races a year at his favorite tracks over the next two seasons, taking the number three with him with Richard Childress's blessing. Tony Stewart still wins the championship in 2005, and so does Johnson winning three in a row. Then in 2009, Dale Jr. would earn his second title. Now, going into 2010, here are all the changes that have occurred. DEI's lineup looks like this. Kevin Harvick, who has had a successful career at DEI, drives the number one sponsored by Shell Pennzoil. He still wins the 2007 Daytona 500 in this timeline. Dale Jr. still pilots the number eight Budweiser Chevrolet, chasing a third title. Alongside him, Brad Keselowski, running his first full-time season, takes over the number 15 from Paul Menard with sponsorship from Burger King. Martin Truex Jr. still drives for DEI, instead in the number 81 Bass Pro Chevrolet. And lastly, after running in the 2010 Daytona 500 and the Coca-Cola 600, Dale Earnhardt enters his final race at the Coke Zero 400 at Daytona. Coke Zero themselves have sponsored him in his final three starts, bringing back his iconic paint scheme with a special twist. As for other changes, Chip Ganassi stays its own team, fielding Dodges. Jamie McMurray rejoins the team in their number 40 after spending a few seasons with Roush Fenway Racing. Juan Pablo Montoya is still in the 42. Richard Childress Racing still has the number 31 of Jeff Burden and the 33 of Clint Boyer. But the number 30 has a new driver in the form of Eric Amarola. Amarola is one of few drivers in a stacked battle for Rookie of the Year. The others include Justin Allgaier in the number 12 for Team Penske and Landon Castle in the number 25 for Hendrick Motorsports. Since Truex is still with DEI, David Stremme is in the number 56 for Michael Waltrip. With all that out of the way, this race will feature 42 cars and a 56 lap race in what is going to be a spectacle under the lights. Without further ado, here's the starting lineup for the 2010 Coke 0400 from Daytona. Starting on the pole is Jamie McMurray. He won the Daytona 500 back here in February. And starting next to him is Paul Menard in the 98. Starting third is David Reagan in the 6. And next to him is Sam Hornis Jr., a couple of drivers in search of their first career win. Starting fifth is Clint Boyer, and next to him is the 16 of Greg Biffle. Rookie Eric Amarola will start in seventh, and then next to him is Matt Kenseth. Starting ninth, Dale Earnhardt in his final NASCAR Sprint Cup race in the special Coke Zero paint scheme. He's got some good speed. Does he have one more in him? And starting next to him is one of his drivers at DEI, Kevin Harvick. Starting 11th is Tony Stewart in the 14, and next to him, his former ride, now occupied by Joey Logano. Starting 13th is Scott Speed, and starting 14th is Carl Edwards. Juan Pablo Montoya will roll off in 15th, and in 16th, you'll find the two of Kurt Busch. Starting 17th is a solid qualifying run by rookie Kevin Conway, and starting 18th is the 24th of Jeff Gordon. In 19th, you'll find the Aaron's Dream Machine of David Ruderman, and next to him is the 43 of AJ Allmendinger. Casey Kane will start in 21st, and Steve Park making a one-off start for Tommy Baldwin Racing in Dale's final race. He'll start 22nd. Jeff Burden will roll off in 23rd, and Jimmy Johnson will start 24th. Martin Trex Jr. will start 25th, and in 26th is Denny Hamlin. Starting 27th is the 5 of Mark Martin, and next to him, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that Budweiser number 8. In 29th is the last of our DEI guys. Brad Keselowski will start 29th, and in 30th is the 83 of Reed Sorensen. Starting 31st is the 18 of Kyle Busch. Starting 32nd is rookie Landon Castle. Starting 33rd is Robbie Gordon, and in 34th is Justin Allgaier, another rookie in the field. Elliot Sadler will start 35th, and 36th is the 56 of David Stremme. Reagan Smith will start 37th, and in 38th is Travis Quaffle. Starting 39th is David Gillen, 
And then rounding out the field are the 39 of Ryan Newman, the 87 of Joe Nemechek, and the 47 of Marcos Ambrose. It is time for the summer blockbuster race that is the Coke Zero 400. As we take a look at Dale Earnhardt, one of the greatest of all time, gearing up for what will be his final Sprint Cup Series race. And before we go green, here's one last look at the Intimidator's office as he gets set and ready to go one last time. Up front, it's this year's 500 winner, Jamie McMurray and Paul Menard on the front row as we get set to go racing under the lights in Daytona. Green flag! Down the back stretch, McMurray takes the high line while Boyer leads the lower line. Into turn three, and McMurray goes back to the low line. McMurray leads a train of 42 cars roaring around this track as McMurray looks to shift back up the track. Boyer looks to follow, but he's going to go back low as they come to the start finish line. It's McMurray leading lap one. However, as they go back towards turn one, it's going to be Clint Boyer taking the lead with help from his RCR teammate, Eric Amarola, and the Intimidator himself, Dale Earnhardt. Earnhardt looking strong here early. It would be great to see him get at least one last shot at the lead at a track he's been good at for so long, including that iconic Daytona 500 win 12 years ago. He looks to the inside as he goes for second. Let's go on board with Earnhardt. Coming back to complete lap two, it's Boyer, Amarola, and Earnhardt the top three, with Stewart and McMurray behind them. But now the rookie, Eric Amarola, wants to take the lead from Boyer. The rookie trying to impress many here tonight. As he looks to the inside, he wants the lead from his teammate. But I have to stress... This lead is going to change so much throughout the race. Amarola will slide up in front of Boyer, but now Tony Stewart is on the move with Scott Speed pushing him. Especially Stewart, he's good at this track as well, especially in the summer races. But trust me, he still wants to trade all those summer wins for one Daytona 500 win. Stewart to the front. Expect many lead changes in what is going to also be the last race for this surface as the track will be repaved before returning here in February for the 2011 Daytona 500. Four laps are complete now as Speed and Stewart are side by side. How cool would it be to see Scott Speed get his first NASCAR win tonight? Scott Speed now takes the lead, but here comes Juan Pablo Montoya. Couple of open wheel drivers up here in front showing the NASCAR stars what they're made of. Off turn four, look at this, Kevin Conway. Conway is up here. Could he or even Sam Hornish Jr. pull off an upset here today? So much more racing left to go here in Daytona. Battle up front as we see Sam Hornish Jr. and Kevin Conway battle for the lead. Conway is going to extend his number 37 Ford to the lead.
how about this? A good moment in the spotlight for Conway, but that's going to be short-lived. Here comes David Rudiman and Kevin Harvick on the charge. So many different lead changes as Conway's lead will go limp as Rudiman looks to take the lead in turns three and four side by side with the 37. That inside line is definitely where you want to be. It's the quickest way around the track. And one of Michael Waltrip's Toyotas takes the lead. DEI leading the way in Dale Sr.'s final race as Kevin Harvick leads with Casey Kane behind him. Martin Trex Jr. is up there as well in the 81. Now we see Matt Kenseth, the 2003 champion, make his way up front. But it is still Kevin Harvick leading the way. This being Dale Hart's last race, it would be fitting to see a DEI car win here tonight. Harvick looking to be the fastest of them here tonight as we take a look at the 17 of Matt Kenseth. He's been pretty good on these super speedways lately as he now wants the lead. He takes second from Casey Kane. laps in and car 11 leads but McMurray wants to take the lead from Hamlin. McMurray has help from guess who that's Dale Earnhardt in the three. And we go on board with Dale Earnhardt. He looks strong and believes he's got one more in him. How fitting would it be for Dale Earnhardt to win in his final start as they come off turn four, and McMurray goes high. The crowd is on their feet for Earnhardt. He is there through the tri-oval. Earnhardt looking for a push from Kyle Busch, and he's going to get it. Dale Earnhardt leads for what could be the final time. The crowd has absolutely erupted for Dale Earnhardt here as Kyle Busch now looks to the inside. But now in the turns three and four, here comes Kyle Busch, a driver representing the current generation now. He's side by side with Earnhardt and he's going to take the lead. Off turn four coming to lap number 13, it's Kyle Busch getting a push from Eric Amarola and Juan Pablo Montoya with Dale Earnhardt leading that outside line. All 42 cars still in this pack and so much more racing left to go. It's hard to tell who's going to win this race. Off turn two, Kyle Busch clears Earnhardt. However, rookie Eric Amarola is there and he's going to make the move. What an exciting race so far. Robbie Gordon has been leading for the last few laps, but now here comes David Reagan in search for his first career win, as well as the driver behind him in Reagan Smith. However, Kurt Busch is now on the move. He climbs his way to second as he works on David Reagan. Down the back stretch, here comes Greg Biffle. He's got it done here before back in 2003, and now he has help from Mark Martin, who used to be a Roush teammate of his. The Roush Fenway Fords also look fast here tonight as the leaders come off turn four. It's that UPS Ford of David Reagan leading the way. Kurt Busch, car number two, in position number two. Greg Biffle and Reagan Smith up there in the mix as well and again as i said before it is just hard to determine who's going to win this race so many positions are changing one lap you're in second the next lap you could be 15th that's how unpredictable the racing here at daytona is you never know what could happen as i see greg biffle now moving to the inside will kurt bush join him those two also used to be roush teammates but instead David Reagan's going to go down low and get some help from his teammate. We got some teamwork 
going on here. 18 laps in. As we look back from the 16, there's the 5 of Mark Martin trying to get that Daytona win. Eric Amarola is back in front with Kyle Busch and Jamie McMurray behind him. Dale Earnhardt is back around 19th place as he continues to run with the pack. He's currently on the outside line but is looking for the right opportunity to move his way back up. Plenty of racing left to go but I'm sure in the end Dale Earnhardt is just enjoying himself here tonight and just having a blast getting one last opportunity to win at Daytona. Back up front, it's a Ganassi duo of McMurray and Montoya. McMurray was leading, but now Montoya is looking to take the lead, and he will. Montoya is having a good run here tonight. As a matter of fact, Chip Ganassi racing as a whole is having a good run. Mark Martin and Denny Hamlin battle side by side for second with Biffle and McMurray behind them. Off turn two and down the back stretch. Still a lot of racing left to go. 31 laps complete here in the Coke 0400. A summer tradition here at Daytona that marks the midpoint in the season. Back to the line. 32 laps into this race. Can Montoya win this race and get a win on an oval? The way things are going, however, we do expect green flag pit stops to happen very soon. We'll definitely have to keep an eye on when those pit stops could start, but looking back here as we go on board with the 5 of Martin, of course Juan Paulo Montoya nearly winning the Brickyard 400 last year, had issues on pit road late in the race, what could have been his first oval win, but to win at Daytona and to put your name in the history books would mean the world to anyone in this field. And here we go. Hamlin is leading the way with a few other leaders down pit road. And let's see how this splits everything up as green flight pit stops are underway. And now here comes Montoya, Martin, and Biffle down pit road as they stayed out the longest. Montoya does feel good about things. Meanwhile, for Dale Earnhardt Jr., it's been a rough going for him. As a matter of fact, it's reported that he missed his stall coming to pit road. He's had a solid season so far and in position to make the chase. But yeah, rather odd that he missed his pit stall as Dale Jr. will have to go back down pit road. Greg Biffle now has the lead and this is the pack of cars right now contending for the win. Matt Kenseth is up there in the mix as well. You see Kirk Busch, Clint Boyer, Martin Trex Jr., Kevin Harvick, among others. Who is going to win at Daytona? Lots of racing left to go as we watch that lead pack go down the backstretch. It's Biffle, Kenseth, Truex, your top three. The leaders are now catching up to Eric Amarola, who has lost the draft. This could hold up some of the leaders. And whoa, look out! Nearly colliding with both Bush brothers. I don't think that's a good idea there as the Roush Fenway Fords pull away. Back here around 29th, 30th place is Dale Earnhardt. He would definitely need a caution to get back into contention. But of course, he's just out there having fun, enjoying his final race. Even so, just to come home in one piece is important. Battle up front, Clint Boyer has taken the lead from Greg Biffle. McMurray, the pole sitter, is still up there as well. His teammate Juan Pablo Montoya is in this pack as well. Closing in now on 10 laps to go. Can Chip Ganassi Racing pull off the Daytona sweep with McMurray winning it in February? McMurray would love to sweep both Daytona races. That hasn't been done in a while. Coming to 10 laps to go, Boyer leads, and here comes Martin Truex Jr. to second. For him and Kevin Harvick, it would be special to get DEI the win here tonight for Dale's final race. 
Truex up to second. Elliott Sadler is third. The action is heating up here in Daytona. Here comes Sadler. Elliott Sadler makes the move on Truex for second. Sadler definitely needs a win here. Kyle Busch is up there as well. And he has help from his teammate Denny Hamlin. Kyle Busch up to second, Hamlin third, but it is still Clint Boyer out in front. Boyer has looked strong here late in the going, but any car in this league pack has an opportunity to get the win here at Daytona. Down the backstretch, look at Matt Kenseth. Kenseth is going to make it three wide on the Joe Gibbs Racing Toyotas of Bush and Hamlin. Kenseth has help from his teammate David Reagan. We got some teamwork up front here, but when it comes down to it, it is every driver for themselves. As we see David Reagan now up to second, he wants that first Sprint Cup win here tonight. Four laps to go. It's Boyer, Reagan, Kurt Busch, and Greg Biffle in a turn one. Reagan is up high, and that opens the door for Kurt Busch. Biffle is there too, and so is Kenseth. Boyer has pulled away a bit, but he is going to get sucked right back in by this pack. If you get too far out in front, it's not going to end well for you, and we may just see that with Clint Boyer in just moments. They're going to run him down before we know it. Back to the tri-oval. Three laps remain. It is still Boyer leading. He's had that Cheerio Chevrolet dialed in to perfection, but Greg Biffle is on the move. Biffle goes down low. He gets in front of his teammate, Matt Kenseth. The 16 and the 17 have been working very well, and I'm sure they've got some plans as we go on board with Biffle. Down the back stretch. He's to the inside of Boyer. Biffle has the opportunity. Can Martin Tricks Jr. get to him and give him a push? Into turn three. Biffle is there. Truex behind him. Still side by side as we are coming to two laps to go. White flag next time by. This is a 2.5 mile circuit and that is still a lot of racing in what feels like a short amount of time. Biffle needs a push from Truex. Is he going to get it? Yes, he will. Greg Biffle takes the lead. He goes up high. And now Martin Truex Jr. is there. I'm sure Martin Truex Jr. wants to win this race for DEI here tonight. Can he pull it off here late in the race? In the turn three, Biffle slams the door on him. Truex goes up high. So does Biffle. Here they come. White flag, final lap at Daytona. Truex is staying attached to the rear bumper of the 16, trying to get the win for DEI. He's going to have about four turns left for an opportunity here. Kevin Harvick is a couple of cars back. Can he get to his teammate in time? I don't know if he will. Off turn two. Truex has a shot. He goes to the inside of Biffle. He needs help. Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick need to get up there to help. It's now or never for Martin Truex Jr. This is his chance. Here they come to the checkers. Off turn four. Biffle, Truex, coming to the line. Checkered flag. Great Biffle. A photo finish here at Daytona. Truex was so close, but it's going to be Roush Fenway's Greg Biffle taking home the win in the Coke 0400. What an amazing finish. Here's a look at the final results. With Greg Biffle, your winner, Martin Truex Jr., so close, finishes in second, Jamie McMurray in third, Kyle Busch fourth, Clint Boyer, who is tied for the most laps led, is fifth, Matt Kenseth is sixth, and then Kevin Harvick, Kurt Busch, Elliott Sadler, and David Reagan round out the top ten. 
Juan Pablo Montoya was 11th. He also tied with Boyer for the most laps led. Denny Hamlin is 12th. Justin Allgaier with a solid run finishes 13th. Travis Quaffle getting a good run in 14th. And then you see the rest of your finishing order. Jeff Burton, 16th. You see Jimmy Johnson back there in 20th. And honestly, some pretty big names who finished back here. Mark Martin, 21st. Casey Kane, 22nd. Carl Edwards, 27th. Tony Stewart was 29th. Dale Earnhardt finishing in 30th in his final race. Not the kind of result he was looking for, but he brought the car home in one piece and is able to celebrate this moment with everyone. Kevin Conway finishes 31st, 32nd is David Stremme, Brad Keselowski was 35th, Jeff Gordon, rough day for him, was 36th, former DEI driver Steve Park finishing in 38th, I'm sure he's going over to congratulate Dale as well, and the rest of your finishing order, tough days for Eric Amarola and Landon Castle, as well as Dale Earnhardt Jr., who actually had some mechanical issues and had to DNF from the race early. Greg Biffle has been doing some burnouts, but now he is pulled off to the side as we see Dale Earnhardt making one last lap around here at Daytona as a salute to the fans. The man in black, the intimidator, Dale Earnhardt, getting a roaring standing ovation from the crowd. What a career it has been for him. And I don't think there will ever be another driver quite like him. I hope you guys enjoyed the 30th edition of Racing Infinity. This has definitely been one of my biggest ones yet. But we also have another big video coming to close out 2024, and that is Sunday Night Lights 1999, coming next month. Stay subscribed and follow my community tab to see updates on that, and I'm about to show you a sneak peek at what's to come as we wrap up the 90s. Thank you for watching as always, I'm Grayspeed Productions, and I'll see you in December.